Hi there, this is uh, an advanced GIS class and I'm hoping that you all have had some exposure to coordinate systems, the concepts behind them, and at least some base understanding for what coordinate systems are, uh, what they do for us, why they're so important. Um, but as it is one of the fundamental things I think that all students need to get out of a GIS class, a full understanding of coordinate systems, I'd be pretty remiss if I didn't uh, try and talk through it um, and give you another exposure to it. So to that end, um, I put together some slides to try and go over some of the kind of uh, underlying concepts behind coordinate systems and why they're so important to us and why we really need to understand them so we can not be dangerous when we're working with spatial data. Okay, so let me see if I can activate this and get it moving forward. Our life would be so simple if the Earth were flat. Right? We wouldn't have to worry about it. It's very easy to draw a Cartesian grid, a simple XY plot, and measure things out in any kind of units that we want with the accuracy we want. Um, and there are some people who do think that the Earth is flat. Now, this is the Flat Earth Society's map of the world, and hopefully after this module you'll have a good understanding of what kind of a coordinate system this is. This is um, a really funky one. This is actually Antarctica here, which turns into an ice wall, which they say holds the ocean water in. Um, it's an interesting group. They do a lot of work to um, explain some very basic things that are observed, like curvature of the Earth when you're in an airplane. Um, if you want to check out their website, it's actually pretty, pretty fun. Um, if you ascribe to this view, I'm also hoping that this module will change your mind, <laughs> because we have some pretty definitive proof that the Earth is not flat. So, Fundamental question in GIS, how do we describe where we are on the Earth? All of our spatial data has to be connected to the Earth and we have to be able to um, communicate where we are without any question. It needs to be definitive. So um, on top of that, we want to be able to do it very accurately. It's not, we don't want to just throw darts in the dark. So we have this Earth that's approximately a sphere and we have lines of latitude and longitude. Latitude lines are parallel, stepping up. Longitude, remember, are the ones that uh, converge at the poles. Um, yeah, and so we can use those to describe where we are. We could also use a, something like sea level to give us a baseline for elevation. And that could work. The problem with that is, is that um, degrees, if we plot them on a sphere, the Earth isn't actually round, and I hope that doesn't blow your mind. Um, but if we were to be off by even a thousandth of a degree, it can be hundreds and hundreds of acres of unknown. So it's, it's really not a good approximation for us. And with GIS, we want to be specific sometimes to the millimeter if we can, um, and that's just not going to cut it to model the Earth as a sphere. So the other thing that's not true is that C isn't level. And so in order to get some sort of co uh, consistent baseline for us to measure our elevations from, we use something called a geoid. The geoid is a map of the Earth's gravity. Gravity is not consistent everywhere in the world, just like sea level is not, and um, hopefully that also doesn't blow your mind. But uh, we can use the Earth's gravity because we can map it and we can um, account for it everywhere. We can use this as a proxy for sea level. And I guess that's in the most conceptual sense. We're really just using gravity um, and defining a base for elevation from that. So this is a kind of a cool three-dimensional map of what um, an equipotential surface would look like of gravity. Um, this is another version of that. I think it's just a cool concept in general. It's just neat to see it this way, I think. There's not a real strong correlation with continents. It has to do with the density of the mantle and um, things like that. You can see in areas that are real low like this, this is where gravity is real low. Gravity is stronger in these dark red regions. So it's an interesting concept. If you could stop the Earth from spinning and stop the moon from pulling on it and stop all of those things, this is a map of what um, the water would look like, I guess. We'd have, um, well, I guess that's not true. I don't think this is stronger gravity. Oh, I should check this out. Hang on. <laughs> 